Welcome to the first code-related YouTube video that I've ever created, kind of. I did another one about an app, but it doesn't matter. This is the first one. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my process that has kind of changed my life. This tool couldn't have been released at a more perfect time. I'm going to be showing you my process of how I've learned to code with the assistance of ChatGPT. I think there's a lot of mistakes and misunderstandings that a lot of people take when they try and learn with ChatGPT, but if you follow the process I'm gonna show in this video, it can help you learn practically anything. I could essentially just rephrase this video as how to learn anything, but today we're gonna to be looking at code. Real quick, example of how I've been using this to actually make money. I've been using this in my real life job. Kind of once you know the fundamentals of how any programming language works, it's pretty easy to learn the fundamentals of any language at that point. You're just kind of learning new syntax. I've used ChatGPT to write PHP. PHP would be like an OG web scripting language. It's really powerful. I don't really understand it, but WordPress uses it. So with the help of ChatGPT, I was able to create a WordPress theme using PHP. I figured out how to fetch posts on WordPress. I used it to write loops. I gave it specific use cases on how to interact with elements. It was able to provide me JavaScript to interact with those elements that came out of the PHP. That was the biggest example that I was able to use ChatGPT for. If I ever get stuck on something and I can't find the answer on Google, I will ask ChatGPT and usually gives me a pretty good response. Kind of points me in the right direction to figure out what questions to ask, which leads us into the biggest thing when it comes to ChatGPT. We're really learning how to ask questions. Do not ask ChatGPT to write your code for you. That is not what we're here for. We are here to give context and understand what questions to ask so we can get that information to learn how to code. That's the real power of ChatGPT. Let's get started. I want my hat. One sec. All right, so here we are in ChatGPT. I like to keep my ChatGPT in like a Chromium application. If you want to know how to do that, you can Google how to turn any website into a Chromium application. That way you can pin it to your start menu. It's just a bit quicker to access. So a programming language I always recommend learning if you're just starting out is Python. It's a very powerful programming language. It will help you learn the basics. And then once you learn the basics, you can kind of figure out where you want to go after that. So let's say I know nothing. Uh, the very first thing you want to do is start very broad. So maybe you could ask something like, tell me about Python just to give an understanding of what Python is. Cool. Now we know what Python is. Now, if you don't know where to start, just ask, what are the fundamentals of Python I should learn? So now we're just gonna see what it says. Variables and data types, operators and expressions, control flow, functions, modules and packages, file input and output, exception handling, object-oriented programming. Just like that, ChatGPT just gave us a roadmap on where to begin. So let's start at the top. And again, we're starting broad. Tell me about variables in Python. So a variable is used to store information. That little example there shows you how to create a number, a string, and a list. This is just going to take a little bit of creativity, we need to now start asking ourselves more questions about this topic. For example, are these all the variable types in Python? Cool. It's listed out all the building blocks we can use to create something in Python. In addition to these built-in data types, you can also define custom data types using classes, which is a fundamental concept of object-oriented programming in Python. Hopefully that cues another question. One tip is to ask for an example. Can you give me an example of a custom data type in Python? Here we are starting broad and we're just narrowing it down into questions we have. And again, this is just to learn the fundamentals. This isn't even like we're getting into a project yet. This is a pretty good example. We're creating a car object. Car has a make, a model, and a year, and it has a description function to return that information. Kind of funny why it chose 2020. Uh, the information used in ChatGPT is only up to 2021. So I guess it chose the previous car of the year. So this is a new bit of information. We are also now learning what print does. Prints information into the console. So what's going on here, my underscore dot description is fetching that information uh, and then print is displaying it into the console. It gives us a nice little blurb on what's going on. All right, so this is good. I think you kind of get the idea of where I'm going with this. You ask a broad question and then you narrow in and start asking more specific questions. It's a good way to speed run your learning, but we can also ask more complicated questions. Here's a question with a bit more depth. I essentially took all the things that it said I need to learn if I want to learn Python and I'm telling it to write an example script that uses all those fundamentals. This this may or may not work. This may have too much depth. Maybe it'll work fine. I'm optimistic that it will give us a good result. All right, so we're importing OS. 
OS, which means we're importing uh, any operating system functions typically used for reading and writing files. By the looks of it, we have a function that adds A and B together and returns the sum. Read numbers from file that takes a path. Cool, this looks pretty good. It's using all the fundamentals that it suggested we learn. We're importing, uh, we're defining functions. We're using an if statement to control flow. A good chance it's going to look confusing, which is good. If this looks confusing, that means you have more questions to ask. For example, I'm not familiar with this pattern here. What, what is this underscore underscore name? It's using a double equals, which means it's checking if it is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore. I'm not familiar with that pattern. I'm gonna ask what does mean and how does it work to check if a module is interesting. It is used to prevent this code from running if it is being imported as a module. This typically wouldn't be necessary, but we asked for an example that uses control flow. If I was just writing a one-off script, typically I wouldn't include something like this, but because we asked for it to show an example using control flow, it used this as an example. So hopefully by now you can kind of see that if you follow this question pattern, you can learn a lot very quickly. Let's get into something more practical. I'm going to create a new chat because I don't want it to understand any context of what we just talked about. I'm going to be using the Pokey API. This is a pretty cool API. Essentially, we can fetch information about Pokemon. In this example, I'm going to use ChatGPT to fetch this endpoint, which essentially just returns 20 Pokemon URLs. First thing, when we are doing something more specific, project-oriented, we want to start with context. So here's some context. I want to write a Python script that fetches a JSON API endpoint. So in this example, this is about as far as I would ever recommend having ChatGPT just do everything for you. This is like one to two tasks. I'm asking it to fetch something and filter. I'm going to carefully reread this and try and figure out maybe mistakes or misunderstandings that ChatGPT might have. Um, the more specific you can be, the better. So I want to write a Python script that fetches a JSON endpoint and filters the result by name into a list. This is always nice. If you can provide example data, that's great because then it understands all the context. Now let's send her and we're going to actually give this a try. I wouldn't be surprised if it knows what the Pokey API is. It's a pretty popular tool. Um, and this turned out to be much smaller than I expected. So used to JavaScript where fetching can be a lot more complicated. Anyways, let's give her a test. So now let's, uh, let's give her a run. We're importing the request package. We are declaring our URL as a string. We're setting up a response variable that is is going to fetch the URL. We're going to get that response. We're going to parse it into JSON. We are going to isolate the results out of that JSON. Line nine here is a little confusing. We are filtering the names using a for each of the results array where each item will be declared as result. We are getting result name, get the result name. And one thing that it's missing here, I'm just going to throw in a print names. Otherwise we would have no idea if it works. So let's save that. Let's hit run. And boom, look at that. We got our 20 names. So that is how easy it is to learn how to code using AI. What an incredible time to learn how to code. In my next video, I want to try and only use ChatGPT to develop a web app that uses this Pokemon API. The great thing is that this is totally free. From my understanding, it seems like it's going to continue to be free at least to some degree. Now I understand that this learning style isn't for everyone. Everyone learns differently. Personally, for myself, this is perfect. If I can just ask questions and get answers, that's enough for me. Hopefully this video helps you. I'm trying to start a group on the Discord channel for code. If you have any questions, get in there. If this video was helpful, hit that like button. If you wanna stick around and watch the next one, subscribe. That's it for me. I'll see you next time.